Jalen Brunson is an unrestricted free agent this offseason, and after balling out this postseason, there's rumors circulating that he could be offered upwards of 30 million bucks this offseason. A lot of people see this as a massive overpay, but did we just forget how good Jalen Brunson really is? Brunson was drafted with the 33rd overall selection in the second round of the 2018 NBA Draft. Coming into the league, Brunson wasn't really expected to be much more than a steady backup point guard, as he was a three-year system point guard at Villanova University under coach Jay Wright. He won a national championship with the Wildcats his freshman year, but it wouldn't be until his junior season when he really started to break out, as he averaged 19 points a game on incredible efficiencies while helping the Wildcats win their second national championship in three years. This certainly all helped Brunson's draft stock, but he still slipped all the way to the second round, so Dallas made sure to capitalize by picking him. His first two years in the league, he was doing exactly what he was expected to do in the NBA, which was be a solid backup, as he averaged these numbers during his first two seasons. However, Jalen's third season is when he really started to turn the corner. While his numbers may not look that eye-popping, it's what he did without Luka Doncic, which was really impressive. During the 2020-21 season, in six games without Luka Doncic, Brunson averaged 19 points, 4.5 boards, 4 assists on very solid efficiencies. He wasn't the greatest from three, but there was room for improvement. So while it was a small sample size, Brunson was starting to show that he has the potential to lead an offense on his own. Despite this, he hardly played in Dallas's first round series against the LA Clippers that season, as he only averaged 16.3 minutes over the course of the series. Brunson would go on to further improve his game in the 2021-22 season, as he averaged 16.3 points, 4 boards, 5 assists, on 50% from the field, and about 37 percent from three. These numbers are especially impressive when you consider the fact that Dallas's offense is built around Luka Doncic having the ball like 95% of the time. This is proven with Luka's league leading usage rate of 37.3% compared to Brunson's 21.9%. But remember Brunson's stats without Luka last season? Despite how good it was, it was way too small of a sample size to truly get a representation of his ability to lead an offense but this season was a little bit different. Brunson played in 17 regular season games this season without Luka Doncic in the lineup, and he averaged these incredible numbers of about 20.5 points, 4 rebounds, 7.5 assists, 49% from the field, and 35% from deep. Brunson was finally starting to showcase what he could do outside of Luka's shadow, and he'd have a perfect opportunity to continue showing people what he can do on the biggest stage during the NBA playoffs. Luka strained his calf in the Mavs meaningless season finale and without Luka people started to write off Dallas, myself included, especially considering Donovan Mitchell's elevated playoff performances. But the Jazz still struggled even with Luka off the floor in game 1. They still came away with the 99-93 win though behind Donovan Mitchell's 32 point performance and Bojan Bogdanovic's 26 point performance. Brunson recorded 24 of his own, but it was very inefficient as he took 24 shots and the Mavs lost. But game two is when Brunson would come alive. Jalen led the Mavs to a 110-104 win in game two behind a 41 point performance on 60% shooting. Not to mention he also added eight boards, five assists, two steals, and six threes. And Brunson completely outplayed Donovan Mitchell as it was an embarrassing loss for the Utah Jazz as a whole. Jalen Brunson was coming. Jalen even continued this going into Utah as he put together another masterclass by dropping 31 points with six assists in a 126 to 118 win over Utah on the road giving Dallas a 2-1 series lead going into game four with Luka Doncic returning. So without Luka Doncic this postseason, Brunson put together 32 points, 5.3 boards, 5.3 assists, while only turning the ball over once a game on 51% from the field and 41.2% from three. Not to mention, Brunson had single-handedly given the Mavs a 2-1 series lead. He had officially arrived. And even with Luka back in the lineup, Brunson didn't slow down one bit as he still put together 21.5 points over the course of their postseason run, meaning Brunson was essentially the number two option on the team that went all the way to the Western Conference Finals, on top of the fact that he outplayed Donovan Mitchell, who most regard as a superstar. 
So what about Brunson? Heading into today's free agency, Brunson has three meetings with three different teams. One with New York, one with Dallas, and one with Miami. New York is considered to be the current favorite to land Brunson as it sounds like they're preparing to offer Jalen a four-year deal in excess of $100 million on top of the fact that the Knicks recently hired his father, Rick Brunson, to be a part of their coaching staff. Dallas is reportedly pessimistic when it comes to retaining Brunson, as despite the fact they can offer him a max 5-year $125 million deal, they don't want to pay him that much. They're willing to do a 5-year $106 million deal, but Brunson could see that as an insult, especially considering the Knicks offer. As for Miami, they don't have the funds to acquire him straight up, so they'd need to incorporate him in a sign-in trade, so this could potentially mean that Kyle Lowry could be on the move. Overall though, I think we're really underestimating the value of Jalen Brunson, as well these contract offers he's getting might be an overpay, we still gotta realize dude put up all-star numbers when he wasn't with the league's leader in usage rate. This guy could be an all-star on a team like the Knicks, and we have to acknowledge that. But that's the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think of Jalen Brunson and his contract situation down in the comment section below, but I hope you enjoyed. And with all that being said, peace.